Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kype at Labs. In today's video we're going to be talking through the concept of tsunamis. Okay, so in the previous video we introduced the idea of earthquakes. So we're thinking about it in terms of um, this idea of seismic activity or seismic um, these vibrations that can occur um, in the earth as a result of um, tectonic plate movement. Okay, so we looked at this idea of two kind of tectonic plates. One over here, one looking over here, and then this one is travelling to the left of what you're seeing, this one is travelling to the right. <coughs> and that we're getting this point where as these two plates make contact with each other, as this one goes underneath, um, that is, it subducts, just to remind you of that term, um, it subducts underneath this plate. We get to this, this spot here where these two plates are dragging against each other. Okay, So if you can kind of visualise it perhaps like this, that where my fingers are touching, that then there is friction. Okay, that Remember that as they're sliding past one another, um, they don't slide easily like, you know, ice skating on ice, okay? But they're grinding or kind of jagging kind of past each other. And so what often happens is that um, because they don't slide evenly, that they kind of catch and there's friction and then all of a sudden, snap, they kind of release or they kind of jerk past each other. Okay, so what we, what we get when that happens, we get that jerk of movement, we get a shock wave that happens. Okay, that travels out in all directions. It travels out through the crust sideways in all directions as well as down through the earth. And so what we could recognise is that we can detect this activity. We can pick up these vibrations by the movement in the earth. We can look at how um, that crust is moving and we can, kind of, we can use that to detect and measure the power of an earthquake. And also then we can measure and monitor um, it's the, the progress of those waves through the crust. But one thing that often can happen with um, an earthquake, an underwater earthquake, is a tsunami. So what I want you to picture is let's say that we have this scenario here and that actually this is underneath the ocean. Okay, so this, so that we've got, you know, if I kind of keep it just to kind of that frame, so that we have all of this is water that's present above where those tectonic that tectonic boundary is. Okay, now this may be water, and then it might actually be right near where it becomes continental crust. It might it might have the land that's actually kind of up here. Maybe it's not that far offshore, or maybe it's way at, way out into the middle of the ocean. Now we're still talking about a convergent boundary. Okay, so this doesn't happen. Um, in situations where the plates are moving past, uh, away from each other in opposite directions. It happens where they're moving towards each other or they are sliding past each other horizontally in opposite directions. Okay, um, So a convergent boundary or a transform boundary. Now in this case we're talking about a convergent boundary so well, I'll put this one in brackets just so that you can recognise that that happens too. Okay, um, But so what happens here is that we think about, if we can come back to, to my fairly average kind of demonstration here, this idea that these plates kind of move past each other and they kind of catch and then all of a sudden you get this release and it's like the, you know, the, the, the flick of a mouse trap or a kind of a spring that all of a sudden um, it kind of pops up and what happens is it, it flips or it, you're kind of, it, it, all of a sudden one of the plates moves up quite quickly and what happens is that that gives you a shock wave that travels out through the ocean, but particularly the shortest distances up to the surface, and pushes this water up. Okay, so this water travels up, gets pushed up in the air. Okay, and then the thing is that then it doesn't stay, it's not supposed to stay up there, it kind of comes back down. Okay, and so it comes back down at this massive kind of chunk of ocean, this massive amount of water has kind of moved up and then down again. <coughs> And what happens there is that then that creates this big kind of ripple. This rippling kind of wave that then starts to travel out in all directions. So it's literally quite, you know, quite similar to a rock in being chucked into a pond. 
and it kind of it makes this, this big splash and then this shock wave of water that travels out in all directions from there. And so what happens then if we if, if I kind of change the diagram up a little bit to you know imagine like when we considered the Japan tsunami, you know, so say if we've kind of got this is an overhead view, we've kind of got a land mass that's over here, and then we have an area, you know, our our epicenter, a spot directly above the earthquake that this is this is all ocean. Oops. Okay, just to kind of give you that idea, this is all the ocean. And so then we get this shock wave that kind of centers out from here. And so then you get these waves that start to travel like ripples traveling in all directions. But what happens is that that then these rap these ripples of water, these shock waves of actual the the moving water, the wa moving wall of water travels towards the land. Okay? And then as it travels towards the land, what it does is eventually that, that water has to go somewhere. Okay, now it hits the land, but there is such an immense power and an, an immense um, momentum to that wave, you know, that it's, it's, it's practically unstoppable, but then it hits the shore and keeps going. Okay, we saw that in the Japan kind of case study, that this idea that, that the water doesn't um, easily stop. It will, it will slosh onto the shore and it will, because of that momentum, because of that power of keeping it moving, it will keep going, it will keep moving its way in towards the land, okay, until eventually it hits high ground or it's slowed down enough by obstacles or, or whatever to, 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 to kind of, yeah, to, to make it stop. But we can see that that, especially in low-lying areas that are often near the ocean, near the edges of the land, that can be very difficult. Um, especially in places like Japan and what we saw in 2004, the Boxing Day tsunami in Indonesia. There's lots of low-lying areas that have very little high ground, very little resistance um, to the, these shock waves of water, that, these waves of, of water that travel. Okay, and so this wave of water is what we call a tsunami. Okay, so the, the special, you know, that this actually originates from a Japanese word because it is, it is something that um, they observed very commonly that happened, you know, because lots of earthquakes happen around Japan, um, that tsunamis are a fact of life. They are quite common there relative to, you know, some other places like California that get earthquakes, but not a lot of tsunamis um, at all. So, um, yeah, so, so that, that wave of water is, is what we refer to as the tsunami. So we're starting, so it comes from an underwater earthquake Okay, so just to kind of recap, so uncorded earthquake pushes a block of water up and then which comes back down, so we get ripples, but it's actually more like a shockwave from a massive explosion that travel in all directions, um, practically unstoppable. Okay, it's just, it's not like a, a breaking kind of wave at the beach that you can just kind of ride or that you can kind of get out of the way, you can outrun it. That it's, the, it, with, a, with a, you know, sufficiently large tsunami close to where the earthquake has happened, that it, there's, there's very little that you can do. Aside from get to high enough ground to, and to hope to actually be out of the way of where the water kind of travels, there's very little that's, that's able to be done. Okay, and so that these tsunamis can cause a massive amount of damage um, because the water... Um, yeah, the, the water kind of carries all of that debris with it. And, you know, so you get things like boats and cars and, and other, you know, just kind of trash that's, that sort of develops, pushing its way, moving its way massively inland um, as a result of this movement of water. Um, and that can be a massive part of the devastation that it can cause. It just not only does it destroy things in its path, but it leaves a whole lot of rubbish behind that then needs to be cleaned up. Okay. Um, so we've talked about a little, recapped a little bit about the concept of the earthquake. We've looked at the example of a tsunami, what causes it, and some of the damage that it can cause. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.